Hello guys, Josh here, Michigan Whitetail Management. We are going to touch on the base of what is a deer factory. I've had uh, some questions in regards to everybody's opinion on what that uh, definition means. And I think that definition is a little bit different to everybody. So uh, the definition of what is a deer factory to me is the uh, number of the number of deer at the right time of the year the right number of deer at the right time of the year is how i like to explain that so um, we've all heard the term and um, to some it's uh, you know I, I think it's nature that we want to it's human nature that we want to um, see high deer numbers on our properties and it justifies that we have done the right thing um, in, a, in food plots and uh, it lets us know that um, we have, uh, we're getting that, that term that I use, you guys hear all the time, is getting the return on investment that you're, you deserve on your property. But you have to be careful with that. And here um, is a few reasons why I'm a, I'm a huge believer that um, having a couple of different steps here. So one, is if you have a piece of property that let's say is not um, is not um, polished or not truly set up any other way than focused around one trail to a box blind looking over a bait pile. Um, if that's how the property is set up, whether it's 10 acres or 120, um, Usually those uh, feed stations or bait piles were never placed until um, I believe it's September 15th is when we could start baiting here in Michigan and that kind of um, varies across the country on how they do that. Um, but here in Michigan, let's say that property set up with, uh, you know, uh, bait piles and you hunt the same stands in the evenings as you hunt in the mornings and so that what that uh, brings is a lot of those areas let's say here in uh, lake county for example what you'll find is you'll find uh, some of these properties are set up around um, 10 and 10 to 40 acre parcels let's say so if you have no feed on there other than natural uh, browse acorns and um, if there is any uh, low um, immature sprouts that the deer are able to, to eat on, whether that's from a clear cut or whatever it might be, um, you are probably seeing deer, especially on 10s and 20s, you're probably seeing deer, you're, you're in the middle of a, of a, um, of a pattern or a, a travel pattern, deer movement. So you're in between water, cover, and feed. Somewhere in that mix is where you're at. Now, what I'd like to use, you know, tell people to use caution as this is um, if you start creating that blank slate, let's say, and you go in and want these food plots to be green all year long, and the next thing you know is you go in and we start maybe planting a, um, an annual, and, um, you know, maybe it's a situation where the soil isn't the greatest and, and uh, has never had a plot in there, and it, it's a confidence booster. So we go in and we plant these, we find the area, we get your ex, your entrance right, your, entr your entrance trails, where to park right, starting from where to park the vehicle, how to enter into it, is there a home on it, are you entering it from a cabin, put that all together. And what, you know, a lot of people want to see is they want to see, as soon as you hang the trail cameras, they want to see high deer numbers at all times. Well, Here's a couple of things is I don't agree with that is deer high deer numbers early in the year can be detrimental to me um, with your fall setups and what that is and the reason that is is now you you are going to once you create that and you especially if you have a blank slate and you go into an area where it's not um, there's no nothing other you know, on a 10 or 20, then that's that new food plot that you put in. There's going to be a lot of attention on that plot. But the object is, is to keep those numbers, doe numbers, especially immature doe numbers, under control. 
And if you keep those doe numbers under control where they're still eating elsewhere, you know, whether it's um, out on a big mass acorn crop or whether it's out on um, someone's field that they're able to go out and, um, you know, uh, to, to eat some greens, whether it's alfalfa or maybe you've got beans and maybe you're, you know, you're, some of your deer that are coming through your parcels or going out to cornfields, whatever that is, that's okay. You, you want those deer to, you want to be a transition area. You want movement. So don't be alarmed if you have um, okay deer numbers, not mass of deer numbers going into the fall. A mature buck does not feel comfortable in situations where there are high doe numbers um, early season in the summer months. And the reason that is, is drama. Um, with high doe numbers, you get, uh, especially that time of the year, you have high fawn numbers and activity, and it creates a stir. So if you're in an area that you have that, you need to look outside, think outside the box a little bit. Um, what you're going to find is you go downwind of those areas and you'll start making connections, especially if you um, had the chance to be able to set foot on that property in the spring of the year um, after the hunting season. You'll really see that that core focused main area of attention with high deer numbers is not where your mature bucks were. They were off the beaten path, so to speak. So keep that in mind that high doe numbers in the summer can be detrimental to um, can be detrimental to habitat can be detrimental to um, with habitat comes along with food and the stir that it creates and it's a competition thing now with that said going into the fall months so we start creeping up on um, September. So what do we got to do to get to September? So you go in in our August time period built around rain. We go in and if there is a plot situation there we start putting attention on what, what's going to be there. What's not in the area? Uh, how much um, tonnage do we need? So 10% uh, is a very good number around your uh, based on your acreage. So you start building that for a fall setup. So what you're going to do is now you're going to draw deer that because the beans are gone, the corn is gone, the the acorns have been picked through and the acorns are still kind of ripening. They're getting into that time. You're going to see different deer patterns. You're going to see um, hopeful. Well, what you could see is if you're if you're in an area where you start seeing that movement happen, but you're seeing immature bucks, you're seeing yearlings, year and a half, two and a half year old bucks, even three and a half year old bucks that are using those um, water holes that you place, those food plots, and there's no mature bucks. Don't be alarmed yet, but you need to tie that those three things into doe numbers. So are, are there any does that are using that or is it only immature bucks? So if you tie those two together, if you have high doe numbers, immature bucks, you're probably safe to say that your mature bucks have not moved into the area yet because there is too much drama. So if you're looking to hunt that spot October 1st, you're in the wrong spot. So you need to uh, still maintain that, still create that, but move off, like I said, the beaten path. Go into those pinch points, go back into the woods further where they're staging, get off them areas and um, create uh, your destiny pretty much. So now you get into the October um, time and those, those immature bucks all of a sudden vanish. No immature bucks. You have no numbers. What's happened? So in a perfect situation, if you're in that area that you should be in, now because you've transi transitioned from the um, fall into the summer months, into the early fall, now into that peak time around the November time. So you should be in that transition, 
transition area where your buck your immature buck numbers start diminishing and now you're picking up a little more mature a uh, little more mature bucks so that is a perfect circle that's a perfect world scenario so keep that in mind and that can be used um, and, and, and use that tactic and I think there's a lot of um, and we're going to be doing some other videos here because a lot of the comments that I've been getting are we, we are structuring our whole business and we're, we're pro food plot and we're, we're uh, anti uh, baiting and we're anti state land. Well, that couldn't be further than the truth. I hunt state land myself, excuse me, and I use these same tactics other than planting food plots obviously on state land. Now, like I've said before, the whole world does not revolve around a food plot. So, but your success revolves around the design of your property, plain and simple. So you cannot design, you cannot create, you cannot hinge cut out on state land, but you can find those areas where the state has done it and the deer and the good Lord has put those deer there um, for that reason in those in those movement areas where are they at so uh, going into the fall keep that in mind what's your strategy how are you going to get from A to B and are your deer numbers in check so take a so to answer the question so going back what is a deer factory to me a deer factory is the correct deer number at the right time of the year in the right location. So take them uh, tips and ideas uh, to heart and start thinking back on what last year, uh, where you were last year with your deer numbers. Where were you with your doe numbers? Where were you with your pressure? If you were on private land, were your deer uh, pressure movements um, created or restricted from other uh, areas, other um, uh, human force? Or were you in an area where your deer numbers are, uh, your doe numbers are extremely high and all, three, all through the fall, your mature bucks didn't come into that spectrum like we talked. If your, your doe numbers are high and they stayed that way throughout the fall, don't make the same mistake as you did last year. Um, correct that, and that sometimes that can be corrected by just an um, a different uh, food plot. For example, what you're putting in it, when you're putting it in there. Um, now keep in mind with no minerals. Um, maybe that'll change a little bit that they're not going to be frequenting that as much and it's not going to be the draw but why are them deer numbers why are those doe numbers higher so uh, like i said take that in kind of fit that in and we'll be uh, talking on that topic a little bit more um, as we go here so um, stay tuned thanks